Good evening, everyone. I am Madhusudan Raj. I am your host. This is 30th March 2013. And today I am in front of you to uh, discuss this important development which took place in, the, in India in last week. <clears throat> This uh, development is very important because you know this is a policy related matter and uh, basically uh, uh, RBI is monetary policy related matter and uh, if this particular you know policy goes through the government and it becomes a law then this is going to have a huge impact on our lives as every other governmental policy has an impact on our life which this one is very crucial because you know it's kind of uh, kind of a very important turning point in the RBI's you know framework of you know devising their monetary policy uh, so I want to discuss that first and then I will want to uh, then I will discuss uh, uh, P. Chidambiram's you know uh, some interview with you know uh, some reporters where he said something very dangerous thing uh, what dangerous thing he said I will discuss that later on and then I'll talk about the you know RBI's you know um, uh, mid-quarter policy review which they announced you know last week Tuesday but that I will discuss very briefly the major focus of my today's you know talk is uh, this new development you know what is this new development so let's let's see uh, what this new policy related major government design uh, but bev before we discuss that we I know I will just you know give you from a brief background RBI is the central bank of you know India and it it frames the monetary policy po monetary policy means uh, basically controlling the supply of fiat currency rupee paper you know currency rupee so and via that they actually influence the market interest rate and uh, basically by doing that they control the money supply into the economy so so far this particular monetary policy was framed by RBI's governor uh, only he has the final say on RBI's monetary policy and uh, he will you know basically discuss things with uh, uh, his you know monetary policy committee but final say will be of uh, the RBI governor for example right now RBI governor is Subarao so he will listen to his monetary policy committee but in the end whatever he will decide will become the monetary policy and it turns out that the Indian government is not very happy with you know RBI's present governor Subarao because he is you know because as I told you in my last you know talk that the government is very much interested in the lower interest rate because they think that by lowering the interest rate by printing a lot of money and lowering the interest rate they can boost the economy they can boost the economic growth industry people are also clamoring for you know more money printing so but you know RBI's governor is quite reluctant and he is quite hesitant in doing that he as an I'll discuss you know he did reduce the uh, 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 repo rate in all in last monetary policy review but uh, government officials are saying that it is not enough for example the planning commission deputy chairman Montek Singh Aluwalia said RBI has disappointed the market they were expecting more from the RBI right so uh, as I said they're quite frustrated with uh, this present you know governor and the whole framework of monetary policy making so they are you know trying to uh, directly influence the framing of RBI's monetary policy so what they're proposing right now this proposal was you know from uh, the past finance minister who is uh, a president right now uh, Pranab Mukherjee and uh, they have put that into table and this will go through the cabinet and then it will go to the parliament and if parliament you know passes it then it will become law and if it is become if, if it is going to become a law then as I as I'm just you know going to discuss everything it's gonna be a big trouble for all of us so what is this new you know policy related measure which government is eyeing government is eyeing to put their own people bureaucrats on the RBI's monetary monetary policy panel right so the news is saying panel for more government say on monetary policy <clears throat> A committee including government appointees including government appointees should set monetary policy government appointees should set monetary policy this should send alarms you know in people because 
if this government bureaucrats are going to sit on the monetary policy committee panel then you know we know what is going to happen but but let's wait for a while we discuss the implications of this policy later on but let's first see what the news actually is a finance ministry panel recommendation on thursday in a sign that the government aims to increase its say over policy while lessening the influence of the reserve bank of india rbi governor in a sign that the government aims to increase its say over policy while lessening the influence of the RBI governor as i said they don't like what subarav is doing because subarav is reluctant in reducing the interest rate so right now the government officials are so desperate that they are going to put bureaucrats directly on the panel which is setting reserve bank of india's monetary policy uh and they are very clear about that you know the framework envisaged by the commission features a strong combination of independence and accountability for rbi in its conduct of monetary policy and that's a joke right even right now this notion that rbi is somehow autonomous and rbi is somehow independent is completely wrong because central bank central government has a lot of influence on rbi's monetary policy in fact rbi is a creation of government so that they can finance the huge budget deficit whatever money they want to spend to buy their votes right rbi is just there to finance all these profligacies of government so this whole talk of independability and accountability of rbi is just smoke and mirror that is just to fool all of us but at least you know they are saying it so far now but they don't want that even you know they, that independence that autonomy is just going to go you know if this panel is going to sit on rbi's monetary committee right and as i said they are pretty clear you know what they want india's interest rates are among the highest of any major economy and government subarav's hawkish stance has frustrated the government as it tries to revive growth in in an economy growing at its slowest pace in a decade so as i said rbi is you know governors you know uh, monetary stance is frustrating the government because he is worried about inflation at least he is saying that he is worried about inflation because he thinks he little bit understands i'm sure he is not you know in complete you know understanding of what his policies are doing to all of us you know actually he is creating inflation already but he is you know little bit you know cautious in his you know and his action so government officials they don't like it right they just want that he prints a lot of money pumps that money into the economy and that will you know supposedly revive the economic growth so that's why they want to lessen his power and they want to put you know their own bureaucrats government the point is on monetary policy you know committee panel uh and not only that uh, rbi our finance ministry's chief economic advisor raguram rajan the famous finance professor from chicago university he is also in favor of this policy and many people are saying that he is going to replace subarav when subarav's term is going to end in september right uh, raguram rajan told reuters last week he favored clipping the power wasted in the post of governor and supported a committee approach right so these are all dangers for all of us when it comes to making policy decisions subarav in practice does take the views of staff and advisory committee on board but he often goes against the panel's advice minutes of central bank meetings have so on. so they don't like what governments you know what rbi's governor is doing he is not pumping enough money that's what they are saying they just want to print a lot of money and spend it into the economy and they are just going to create a lot of problem for all of us if they are going to do that now what is this draft bill saying under the draft bill which would replace 15 different financial sector laws the seven member monetary policy committee would be headed by the governor and include two members appointed by the government in consultation with the bank along with three outright government appointees right so in seven member committee one is in you know, osobarao and two members are appointed by the government in consultation with the bank so they will obviously want to print a lot of money along with three outright government employees so these are pure bureaucrats right 
So this is what government is, this desperate government is trying to do right now. And you know, the implications are very simple. If these bureaucrats are going to decide and determine the monetary policy, India will soon become Zimbabwe. Because what they're going to do, they're going to print a lot of money, they're going to create a lot of money out of thin air, this fiat currency paper notes, and they're going to spend it into the economy, creating a lot of boom bust cycles, creating inflation, which will result into, you know, skyrocketing higher prices. You know, prices are already skyrocket high, but they will, you know, go to the moon if this, this panel, these bureaucrats are going to decide the monetary policy, right? I know Subarav is not, uh, you know, kind of ideal for setting the monetary policy. The whole framework of having a central bank itself is wrong, it's bogus. They cannot determine 1% or 7% cannot determine what the market interest rate should be. That is a work of free market that is that should be determined by the society's time preference. But in any case, you must be cautious if we are going to have this government's you know, panel deciding monetary policy then that's going to you know screw us like anything indian economy will be completely devastated as i said boom bust cycles inflation and a huge transfer of wealth from the productive class of the economy to the unproductive class of the economy will take place in future if this particular you know law you know a particular you know act goes through the parliament and becomes law so we have to see in future we have to keep in close close eye on this new development and if they are successful, and I think they will try very hard, and I think they will, you know, have their own say in the end. And, and if that is going to happen, then I think we are in big, big trouble. All right. So that is one important development which I wanted to discuss. Another thing was just, you know, uh, this finance minister, uh, Chidambaram, keeps coming out with all kind of lunatic, you know, statements. So recently in New Delhi, he said that... Uh, uh, it is bankers' duty to give loan to all eligible people. So he is teaching bankers how to do banking. You know, he's a Harvard Law graduate, and what does he know about banking, right? Even even if he's knowing, you know, why the bankers should take his advice, he's just a government minister. But because he thinks that he's in charge of everything, he's a finance minister, so he's going to, you know. <clears throat> scold and push these bankers to give these loans to all kinds of people and we know how this ends this will end into all kind of you know so-called subprime credit bubbles right and when those bubbles will you know bust indian economy will be in shambles it will be a lot of trouble but let's see what he's saying what his you know arguments are uh, it is said it is the bankers' responsibility to extend loans to all who are eligible. I want all the people to believe that if you are eligible, if you are qualified and have the capacity to repay, then you have right to get loan and it is bankers duty to give it. So he's saying that it is right of people to get a loan. <laughs> Can you imagine? You know, we have we have heard about all kinds of rights and all kinds of rights, you know. Uh, the Indian, you know, uh, Supreme Court said that people have right to sleep and people have right to education and right to this and right to that. And this is another right they have invented, right to loan. Now, as I said, who is going to determine whether a person is credit worthy or not? That can only be determined by the individual banks and the bankers who are running those banks. If they think that the customers are not credit worthy, they will obviously decline their credit you know loan application but this this finance minister is pushing them is pressurizing them he's saying that it is everybody's right to get a loan no right right you know getting a loan is not a right now i don't have time to discuss what you know these human rights are but obviously this these are this all right to sleep and right to health and right to education and right to loan these are not rights these are all actually human wrongs right human rights are actually private property rights and when Finance minister is intervening into banks' private affairs. He's actually violating their private property rights when he's pressurizing them, when he's, uh, I'm sure, physically threatening them, right? Uh, he's saying that to the right to loan is like right to free speech and other rights. No, it is not. You know, right to free speech is also not a right. Free, free speech can never be a right. You cannot stand into my home and uh, deliver a talk without my permission, right? 
a healthy discussion is obviously uh, ob obviously you know warranted and uh, you know I, I i also invite but that doesn't mean that people have right to free speech right you cannot go and start talking in somebody else's house for example private property rights are the fundamental human rights you know everything else is secondary um, not only that, he talked about this student loan also. As many as 25 lakh like, students availed of such loans till December 2012 with the total amount of spending 50,000 crore rupees. So this education bubble is building up in you know, India. Actually, it's already popped. This MBA bubble has already popped. But these students who are you know, taking loans from the bank, I pretty much, you know, I'm pretty much sure that they will not be able to repay this loan and this debt bubble, the student debt, debt bubble, you know, when that will pop in the end, that is also going to create, you know, disaster for the economy and banks will be in trouble, right? Uh, and he's saying, finance minister is saying, I want more and more students to apply for education loan as education and advancement of knowledge will build the economy. Now, you don't build the economy by pressurizing you know, banks to give loans to all kind of people, right? Education is important, but who says that today's universities and colleges provide education? You know, I'm a teacher and I teach in the university. I know what kind of education they're providing. It is not at all education, it's just schooling. Just by going into the classroom, you are not going to learn anything. In fact, most of the learning is outside the classroom. But in any case, he is pressurizing the banks to give loans and if that is going to happen I, as i said these banks are going to be in trouble right you know what is happening in cyprus right now the banks are in trouble and they raided all the depositors money right they stole their money outright similar thing is likely to happen in india also in fact two episodes of bank run have already taken place in my local town you know surat city and that will you know happen more and more in future Right, so we have to be very careful, as I said, don't keep more than necessary money into these banks because they are inherently bankrupt and they can go under any time. And last but not least, RBI uh, uh, cut the interest rate by 25 basis point last week, March 19, and by doing that, they created more inflation. But as I said, the, the government officials don't like it, and that is the reason why they are saying that we are going to uh, put our own bureaucrats onto monetary uh, policy committee panel and government is going to decide now what the monetary policy go policy is going to be. That means more inflation and as I said in one word, if I have to explain to you what this means, India will pretty soon become Zimbabwe. Hyperinflation is the only end and then ultimately crack a boom, right? The whole monetary system is likely to collapse if these people are going to do whatever they want to that means printing and spending truckload of money into the economy so again the uh, the message is saying you have to be careful stay away from their system right and take care of yourself i'll be back with you soon thank you very much for watching good night